Yeah, here's what we were messing with the other night when I was doing all that brazing. You kind of see these lines here. Uh, they have all the hydraulic lines for for this guy right here, the old John Deere. Uh, yeah, we got uh, the problem was all these lines run down the side from the uh, like from the controls right here. Let me see, we got them kind of marked and. There's like four, like four tubes that run down, right down in here along the side, and you know they hooked all the hoses and everything. Well, the problem was they all end up uh, just up in behind here, and all the rubber lines hooked to them and everything. You can see, there yeah, we got them off and marked. Uh, the problem was I got all the fittings over here. Um, I guess asking around a lot of people, a lot of this stuff I guess was obsolete. Um, having somebody make lines would be a real hassle. You can see some of these are they're so bad that, <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> they were sweating actually or, or just even leaking, just pouring fluid right out. Uh, you know, this one ain't, <laughs> this is rough. See, uh, that's, uh, that's an added one. Yeah, I got some. Yeah, the got these. So layers. You can't get that stuff. So what the heck do you do? You know, we didn't want to run it all in rubber. And so you know, this is like off the shelf stuff. I mean, for common hydraulic lines. So. Uh oh, what'd you do? Well, it was popping out of sixth gear. It wasn't really going into top gear. Uh, in fifth, it was. Uh, Acting like it was going into neutral if I put too much power to it. So I took the uh, shift keys out quick and, and tried to grind the nicks off of them and everything. But I'll probably put that back together tomorrow night. So, yeah, but here's here's the deal now. So, shoot, all we got to do is thread that bad boy in there if I can do it. <laughs> you know, well, close enough. Now we got to paint them in that. So now, actually, I mean it... Give or, give or take an inch, we're still okay, but uh, it, was, it was an operation. Um, we made a jig up to hold the lines together, you know, as they came off the, the equipment. Um, and all the ends, we made, we made all those fittings. And uh, what I mean by make is we made them. <laughs> um, I think we got a bunch of... Probably got a bunch of the tools and stuff left still. Uh, I don't see why not. But, um, yeah, it took, uh, my dad probably messed with it. Jeez, must have been. Probably been going at this for about two weeks and probably got a couple hundred bucks in uh, tooling and stuff in it. Uh, when you got one of those, you pretty much can, uh, you know, do what you need to do. <laughs> so yeah, here's the here's all the layout, all the stuff that we had everywhere. Yeah, machine bits and uh, bought you know taps and drills. I don't know if he's got any. We've got some mistakes sitting around here somewhere. Yeah, here's a couple. Yeah, test pieces and whatnot. You know, these were tests, I guess. You know, ah, shoot, screwed that up. Oh well. You know, hardest part uh, was the chamfer on the top because the uh, the O-rings, you know, it's got a seal in there. But, you know, of course, testing back and forth and got a whole bunch of extra O-rings in that. But um, it tore a bunch up. You know, hey, man, this is, what are you going to do? Nobody, everybody's saying, oh, you're going to have to run that all in rubber. Uh, come on, man. Bashing that thing through stuff and you don't want to, yeah, you know, these are mistakes, whatever. But, uh, yeah, you don't really want to, uh, I don't want to have a bunch of rubber and stuff in there. But, uh, here we go. This will be pretty cool, man, one day. He's starting to work on this again. Uh, this, the exhaust is kind of cool. He thinks it needs some slip joints in it. He wants to put fuel injection in. Uh, it's a, it's a three, it's a 320, but it's got 360 jugs on it or something. Uh, it's 
320 cubic inch four cylinder, you know. Um, I think it's got 360 jugs or something on it. Uh, I gotta ask her about that. I think it's like 215 horse. Right around there. So, yeah, we got all these. Yeah, we got all the fittings, and that's what we were doing was brazing and a cutting and a chopping and a machining and a grinding and messing around. And I think we're going to have something good here, man. Yeah, we uh, ended up, did it last year. Yeah, we put a water pump in there. And right now, I got an extra fuel filter on this thing. I just used off one of my old VWs. Um, actually, it's funny, the old Mark I. Rabbit diesel fuel filters, the same thing as, uh, you know, like if you got a Cummins Dodge or whatever, it's got two fuel filters, it's the same number as the smaller filter is. 33358 Wicks or something? Oh, shit, no, not even close. Uh, that's, that's an 86472, I believe that might be a big A filter. Yeah, whatever, just throw that number in something and it'll cross up, man, you'll figure it out. I had to end up redoing the whole seat and everything, it was all... Oh, frozen up and what a mess that was uh, took it all to work and sandblasted it got a new seat that has to articulate around to work the controls the seat flips up and turns around and swivels and then that way you can work the bucket controls and you know you put the roof up so you don't whack your head on it and uh, I think yeah we replaced the line down in here I mean yeah look I mean it's funny, all the fittings, the lines are decent, the fittings are all just, ugh, you know, looking pretty rough. I mean, the hard lines in there are in beautiful shape. Um, yeah, that's the one line that we had to do right there uh, going up. That one popped, so we know, you know, we could, we could probably get by with the rest of them for now. Some of them are pretty ugly and hairy, but, uh, yeah, we got to get this thing going, and, and that was the last deal holding up holding up hydraulic lines and all that so yeah we got her all kind of spiffy shoot <laughs> since my dad's gonna be using it he even went and uh we went and ordered the stickers for you know the, the shifter legend and uh uh for the sticks and all that so you know what the heck you're doing with the buckets and i mean i'm not really much of an operator myself i kind of got it figured out after i hop on it a few minutes and that but yeah so i guess you know it's an early 80s from what I understand but uh yeah man it was kind of cool we figure you know I don't like to let stuff uh stop me and say hey man oh no you can't fix that and, come on man you got a mill and a lathe Psst, you can do quite a bit of stuff especially when you've been worse you know used to working out in the dirt with like a couple of files and a you know pieces of rock to hammer stuff with and so yeah, I guess uh, hopefully here, probably in the next couple days, we'll get this bad boy going again. Should be pretty decent. And uh, kind of start doing some digging. Uh, first, I think around here, I got a little bit of work I'm going to do on the... Uh, I'm going to do a little work on a tractor course out there. Got some ruts and stuff I'd like to fill in. Would be nice, would be nice. Yeah, getting kind of late anyways, man, so... I guess that's pretty much what I'm going to do is call it quits. Yeah. So, all right, guys. I will see you later.